Hi there, I'm Nabil Murad. This is the real work situation. In this training video, I'll show you how to apply some basic formatting in Excel, how to create some very basic functions, copy the functions, and create a basic chart. So let's get started. I'm in the worksheet, sheet one. And the first thing I would like to do in this setup is to merge and center the title across the cells A1, F1. So I'll be selecting the range A1, F1, and on the Home tab of the ribbon, I'll click on the command Merge and Center. The next thing I would like to do, in range A3, F3, I would like to bold and center the text, so I'll click on Bold, and I'll click on the Center Alignment to center it right and left. Next, in column A, from A4 to A21, I'm going to indent and italicize the text. So I'll click on the italic icon and then I'll click on the indent icon, increase indent. I'll click on that twice. Then I'll be applying currency formatting in the range B4, F21. So I'll click and drag from B4 to F21. And I need to open the format cell dialog box. I can right click and select format cell. I can hit the shortcut control one to open the format cell dialog box. I'll select the currency category and then hit OK. All the cells have been formatted. Whenever you see this number sign, you understand that the column is not wide enough. All what you need to do is to adjust the column width by selecting the column letters and double clicking on the border. I'll be inserting a row above row number 20. So I'll select row number 20, right click and insert. I could use the shortcut Control plus to insert and Control minus to delete. Let's rename sheet number one and we'll rename it monthly sales. To rename a sheet, we select it and then we right click on the sheet tab and select rename and I'll be typing monthly sales. For the name to stick, you must hit enter. We'll add a colored border above the total row in A21, F21. So I'll be selecting A21 up to F21. And to insert a color border, I click on the down arrow of the border command on the Home tab, and then I'll select More Borders. This will enable me to, to select the weight of the border, select the color. I'll be selecting, let's say, blue color, and I would like to add a top border. So I'll click on Top Border and hit OK, and here is my top border. If I deselect, I will be able to see it. Now let's apply some shading to rows number one and two. So I'll go to row number one, click and drag to select from A1 to F2. Let's apply a shading color, which means a fill color that matches blue border that I added a while ago. And then I want to change the width of cell F3. I'll be selecting column F. I'll change the width of column F a little bit. That's not enough. So I would like to manage this situation by applying some kind of text trapping to this cell. I'll select these cells in row number three, and I'll click on wrap text to adjust the height of the row so that the text spans over multiple rows. Now in column B, I would like to create a simple calculation to find the total for the month of January. So I'll click on cell B21, and in B21, I can use the auto sum command. That's the easiest way to create a sum. And then I hit enter to get the result. I can copy this formula if I wish. I'm going to copy it from B21 to D21 to copy it across. And I'll extend column C so that I can see the whole number instead of viewing the number sign. In cell B22, the label says smallest sale, which means the lowest sales. I'll be using a function that extracts the minimum, and this function is a min function. So I'll click on the down arrow of the auto sum one more time, but this time I'll be selecting a min function. And because there is a number above, the min function picks up that number. That's not the correct selection. So I'll click and drag to select the range of cells I want from B4 down to B20, and then I hit enter, and I'll be copying this formula to the right. The final thing I would like to do is to create a label largest sales. And here I would like to find out the highest sale amount. And the highest sale amount means the maximum 
I could use the auto sum one more time, but this time let me show you how to create a max function to find the highest sale equal max. And then I hit the tab key. Now I'll click and drag to select the input range and I hit enter and I got the maximum sales. I would like to copy this also to the right. Now let's add a calculation in cell E4 that adds up the quarterly sales. And now if I click on auto sum, Previously, the AutoSum was able to pick up a vertical range. Now, if I click on AutoSum, Excel searches for the numbers and it picks up a horizontal range. Let's hit Enter and I'll be copying this formula down. This time to copy the formula down, I'll be double clicking on the lower right corner and it copies the formula down. In cell F4, I would like to find the average monthly sales. So I'll create an average function. So I'll type equal average, and then I hit the tab key. I would like to find the average sales for the three months. I close the bracket and hit enter. And of course, I could copy this formula down to F19. I can double click on the lower right corner, and I'm sending the formula down. Now let's create a chart. I would like to create a column chart that display the monthly sales for January and February. And to do that, I'll select the labels and I'll select the January and February sales. If I wish to select March, I would extend my selection. Let's make it simple for now. I'd like to compare January and February and I'm selecting the two months. Where do I go to create the chart? I could go to the insert tab and click on the down arrow for the column chart and select the cluster column chart. If you like shortcuts, you can use the shortcut Alt F1, and that creates the chart in one single step. I created this chart. I want to move it to a different worksheet. So on the design contextual tab of the ribbon to the very right, there is a command move chart. When you click on move chart, you can select to move it to a new worksheet. You can also name the new worksheet right from this dialog box. I'll be naming it monthly sales chart. When I hit enter, the chart moved to a new worksheet. Let's add a title to this chart. Right now we have a title here. I could select this and type, but I like to press the F2 key to type in my formula bar. I'll be typing first quarter sales. And the moment I hit enter, I can see that label. If you wish to format it, you go to the home tab. And let's make it bold. And now I can see the title in bold. I would like to change the color of the chart background. So I'll select the chart background by clicking on the border. I'll go to the format tab and change the fill color. Let's make it a light blue color. Now let's go to the next sheet, sheet two. I would like to merge and center the title from A1 to D1. I'm selecting from A1 to D1 and to merge and center, I click on merge and center command on the home tab. And I would like to change the font type to 14. I made it a little bit bigger. I'll be bolding row number three. So I'll select the text from A3 to D3 and I'll make it bold. And we'll add a color border underneath row number three. So I'll go to the down arrow of the borders command, select more borders. Here, I'll select the weight of the border that I want and I'll select the color. I'll stick to the same color that I selected before and I'll add a border below by clicking on the lower border in the preview and then hit OK and here is my lower border. Let's do the same exact thing for the price. I want to add a border for row number 12 so I'll click on the down arrow for border, more borders, select the weight, and then select the color, and then click on the border you wish to add. In the preview, I clicked on the top border, and here I have a border. Because I know that I'll be adding some text in column E, so I would like to apply the same border in cell E3. So I'll click on the down arrow for borders one more time, and select the same width and the same color and click on the lower border so all the cells will look alike. Now, let's create some calculations. Before we calculate, we need to apply some formatting from B4 
to D12. I'll select the range, hit Control 1 to open the Format Cell dialog box, and in the Number tab, select Currency. Let's shade the cells A1 to D2. So this is the label. I'll shade the cells from A1 to D2, the same light blue color. In cell B12, let's make a calculation. In cell B12, I would like to add up the total price. The total price means using the auto sum. So if I click on auto sum, that will be adding the total price. In cell C4, I would like to find the relationship between each one of these prices and the total. That means dividing each one of these numbers, one cell to my left, divided by the total amount, the total price. But because I intend to copy this formula down, I'll hit the F4 key to lock B12. When you lock a cell, that means it's not going to change when you copy down. So I'll be copying the formula down. And then I would like to apply a percentage to, to this column. This is a price percent. So it will look much better if I apply a percentage and I can create an auto sum for the percentage as well. And when I hit enter, it says one, but one means 100%. So I'll be applying the percentage to the total cell as well. In cell D4, I would like to find the new prices. We intend to increase the price by 5%. If this is the basic price in column B, if I increase the price, that means I'll be paying 100% plus this 5%. Let's see how we calculate the new price by typing an equal sign. I want to multiply this price by open bracket one plus this amount, the 5%. And I don't want this amount to change as I copy down, so I'll hit F4 to lock it. And when hitting F4, it adds the dollar sign for me, that's the locking code of Excel. And then I'll double click and send it down. I calculated. The new price. In cell E3, let's add a label, monthly specials. I added a label in cell E3. I could copy the formatting from cell D3. By selecting D3 as a source format, click on the format painter, and then copy that format. Look at my mouse pointer. It looks like a brush. And now I'll be calculating the monthly special. For the monthly special, I want to compare the price. If it's more than 5, if the price is above or equal to 5, in this case, I would I will be delivering the tax create discount promotion. Otherwise, I want to offer two for one deals. Let's see how we do that. This is called an if function, equal if, and the if function is a logical function. It requires three arguments, the logical test, and then this logical test will return either true or false. What do you want to do if the logical test returns true? That's the second value. And what do you want to do if the same logical test returns false? My logical test is to compare before and ask, is it greater than or equal than five? That could be true or false. If it is true, what do you want to do? I want to deliver a message saying, create discount promotion. And then I hit comma. And then I hit comma. What do you want to do if the logical test comes out false? If the logical test comes out false, I'll be making an offer two for one deals. Notice that any text should be in double quotation. And then I'll hit enter and copy my formula down. This column, column E, needs to be expanded a little bit, so I'll hover over the border of column E and double click to expand the column. This is called auto fit or the best fit. It adjusts the column width to accommodate the contents of the column. We copied our formula from E5 to E11. Now I would like to prepare for printing, so I'll be switching to the page layout. And on the page layout, I'll click on this little square in the lower right corner. This is the page setup dialog box. When I click on that, it opens a dialog box where I could be fixing lots of issues related to printing. Because I have a horizontal setup, it will look a lot better if I switch from portrait to landscape. And the next thing I would like to do is to adjust the margins right and left. So I'll check the box for horizontally on the margins tab. Now let's add a header. 
A header is a piece of information that appears on the top of each printed page. So I'll click on Custom Header on the Header and Footer tab. And here I'll be typing my name, Nabil Murad. I'll hit OK. This is the sample. It appears in the preview. I would like to add a custom footer as well, so I'll click on custom footer. The custom footer, like the header, consists of three sections. In the leftmost section, I would like to add a sheet tab, so I'll click on this icon, which will insert the sheet tab, and I'll click on the right section. Here I would like to add today's date. It's a dynamic date. It's a code that will generate the date, and it will update every time you open the worksheet. And finally, now I'll hit OK. This is the preview of my header, the preview of my footer. I'll go to the Sheet tab because I would like to show the grid lines in the printing and I would like to see the column letter and the row number. So I'll check the box for row and column headings. If you would like to see how your sheet will look like, click on Print Preview. And this is how it will look like the finished result of our project. Now I'll go back to my worksheet. This is the finished result. Thank you for watching and see you in our next tutorial.